Hey guys, it's Anna and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing naturally part two of my fall recommendations videos. And if you haven't seen that video yet, you're in for a treat. Check it out. Watch it. Watch it after this. So today we are going to be focusing on designer fall fragrance recommendations as well as like more affordable niche. You're probably sick and tired of hearing about it, but I'm going to I'm going to do it anyway cuz it's so damn good and I'm not going to you know refrain from talking about it cuz what if I have someone new here? What if they don't know about it yet? If you haven't tried it already, let this be your sign to try Giardini di Toscana Bianco Latte. This is the vanilla caramel musk fragrance. This is going like absolutely viral. This is like the it vanilla perfume, if you will. So freakishly good. It has this profile mastered. Like this is the best of the best with this specific note combo, in my opinion, where they're taking the concept of a more simplistic vanilla, but just making it perfect. Also the chef's kiss, amazing longevity. People will be smelling this on you all day with a strong projection sillage. What I love about this though, although it is like a richly crafted gourmand, you have to be into your gourmands, have to be into it sweet, but it doesn't feel heavy to me. It doesn't feel like so thick. It's not intense in that kind of way. It has this whipped quality to it and the way this just trails. It's like a cloud that lingers in the air. This is so cocooning, comforting, just this ultra smooth quality. It's like this sugary, musky vanilla just like raining from the clouds. It's beautiful. I feel like this is an absolute staple in any woman's perfume collection as long as of course you like these kind of notes as long as you like it sweet. And I also wouldn't describe this to be traditionally milky or lactonic. I really don't enjoy that quality in fragrances, but the vibe in here has a dessert-like tone. Give it a try and then you'll understand. Brant Genesis, I would particularly recommend for those of you who enjoy saffron rose combos. And what I like about this is that this isn't your typical rose saffron wood patchouli amber kind of blend like i'm gonna be honest i'm so sick and tired of that that combo i've smelled like a million and one of those fragrances the rose in here doesn't feel dry or mature or too much but adds a really luxurious rich romantic kind of like velvety tone to this scent i picture like the silkiest like perfectly red rose petals. The saffron lifts it up and gives it a bit of an airy quality and has like a nice added sweetness, but not too much. It's just like the perfect light amount. And then I also get a creamy, soft cashmere like woody base. I feel like this is a very easy to like fragrance. It isn't overly complex, but it doesn't smell like all of these other fragrances kind of in this category. And it has more of an approachable tone to it. Very well blended, very smooth. And I get about four hours with a moderate projection. This one, the new girl on the market, Burberry Goddess. This is a beautiful, elegant, more sophisticated version of a, like a more straightforward vanilla perfume. This also gets warmer and more addictive as this warms up and sits on your skin. This is a beautiful blend of mainly lavender and vanilla, but the lavender is quiet. It's toned down. This is not a lavender vanilla like Mongerlan. This definitely has more of a focus on the vanilla, but comparing it to other vanilla prominent fragrances, it's not as sweet as many of those. It still does have a sweetness. I get this warm kind of toasted feel, but what I'm saying is it isn't overly sugary and I've heard a lot of feedback about this one like people who even aren't typically into vanilla fragrances some of them still really enjoy this that lavender just kind of tones that down a bit gives it more of this calming aromatic sophisticated tone and I also pick up on just a little bit of a ginger this is something you can wear absolutely year-round, but I mean, I think shines the most in the fall because of these 
these notes. This is a pretty girl scent, like girl next door, but she's got it all figured out. And although this is a more simplistic vanilla, I can't quite compare it to anything else. I think they did a good job. They did. And I get about five hours with a moderate projection. Okay, this next one, I told you. I told you this was coming and I was gonna be hyping it up and talking about it. Um, I picked this up on like the warmer months and I'm like, just wait because this is literally made of my fall dreams. And that is Rirana Tonka Nutmeg. This is the absolute standout from the house. Holy cow. And like, I don't hear pop. I don't hear people talking about it and it needs to happen. It needs the recognition. This is specifically for those of you who love unisex, unisex fragrances. Oh my gosh. This smells so freaking sexy. I can't get enough of it. This is perfect. Like all of the things I love where it has like a gourmand element, but it can't be considered like full on gourmand. It feels like there's an undertone, let me stress undertone of a spiced dessert in here. A little bit of that feel like you're absolutely not gonna smell this and think, oh, this smells like food. But that brings in this undeniably like addictive, alluring, yummy factor. And then you have the tonka bean, the nutmeg, there's vanilla, it's powdery and creamy from the iris and orris root. This is so well blended. When you first spray this, you are going to get this like fresh green kind of like earthy quality. You're going to get those spices with a little bit of that gourmand undertone. As this dries down, it gets a little bit sweeter, never too sweet, more cozy, powdery, creamy, smooth. Those earthy elements will last throughout the fragrance, but they do die down. And I feel so cool when I wear this. All of the guys out there that watch my videos, please wear this, like wear this for a date. I actually gave a sample of this to one of my male coworkers. He immediately sprayed it on and everyone there was just like, oh my gosh, what is that? And he just like kept sniffing his arm. He's like, girl, that is good. And I'm like, would I give you anything less? If you enjoy the Tom Ford Noir Extreme DNA, you're gonna like this, but I, prefer this actually. I just love it. It's the perfect balance of like cool, edgy, but also like inviting and comforting. And this lasts all day on me with a really good projection. Next up from Maison Taite, this is Vicious Cacao. This is a really beautiful, softer interpretation of a chocolate dominant scent. Sometimes chocolate and fragrances can come across very thick, dark, or very literal. This is a really nice powdery, airy, like unique chocolate fragrance, but isn't like, oh, too, too unique, you know? This smells like a very finely milled cocoa powder. We're gonna get real specific and say 65 to 70%, you know, cocoa. I also personally get a pretty good dose of saffron, just that like very identifiable, airy quality with a bit of sweetness. The caramel in here is a very smooth, thinned out type of caramel. It's warm. I definitely get more so of a benzoin presence than I do amber because that is softer overall. And then this has a nice touch of pink pepper and rum. Again, nothing too much, but there to add a little bit of something. And I get about six hours with a moderate projection. Last, but certainly not least, this is a beautiful unisex fragrance. This comes across as very chic overall with like a little bit of edge. This is Henry Rose Queens and Monsters. This on the one hand has this comforting, powdery, cocooning feel. We have like a coconut musk note and that feels soft and delicate, but then there is also an earthy quality to this scent. There is a prominent pedigree note bringing in that fresh green quality. So because of that pedigree note, it won't be for everyone. So make sure you sample it first, but I do think that this this is like quite a unique sandalwood, vanilla, fresh spicy blend because we see that profile a lot, but this is pretty specific to 
Henry Rose. The sandalwood for me has this duality. On the one hand, I do get like a powdery, smooth, creamy presence, but then I also get this edgy, dry kick as well. And then there's a beautiful, soft vanilla. Nothing gourmand or sweet, but kind of like brings these notes together, makes it more approachable. I feel like this is the clean girl aesthetic and the cool girl kind of wrapped in one. But like I said, totally unisex. Longevity about six hours with moderate projection. So that wraps up my list for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.